out and realizing that your eyelash is coming off a little bit and you don't have your glue to fix it and the fact that you might have to now go out all night, maybe not looking picture perfect the way you wanted to because you don't have your eyelashes on anymore, that's not actually a threat. But you, your nervous system and your inner child, it's trained to believe that this small thing is a threat. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Alicia Gogan. If you are new, and if you are new, don't forget to subscribe because it's a good time over here. Also, don't forget I have a podcast, the Globe Secrets Podcast, which Yes, the visuals are coming onto my channel very soon, but check it out on audio on Spotify and Apple if you'd like to hear more from me. And also don't forget to follow me on Instagram because I post all the time. Literally anything that I possibly can think of posting, I will post on my stories. Before we get into it, you might notice that the camera quality is a little bit better or maybe the sound, I'm not sure yet because I'm this is the first time I'm filming. I'm borrowing my friend's camera to see if I like this Sony camera before I buy it, we'll see. Hopefully it's good, but we need to get in to the video. Now, I used to be somebody, actually, <laughs> I digress already. I still am somebody who is a perfectionist. I am somebody who micromanages, controls, wants everything to be pre-planned, I want to prevent, I want to know when things are happening before they're happening. And the past few years, I've come to realize that is that is honestly a T response. Now, I'm gonna say T response because YouTube likes to flag all my videos nowadays, and I'm assuming it's because I'm using the word and also other words of that sort. And then they realize that I'm not talking about anything bad and then they unflag it, but it's just kind of annoying. I just want to test it out and see. So honestly, being a perfectionist, wanting to control everything in your life and pre-plan and make sure everything goes as you want it and for you to be prepared for absolutely anything that could happen. On one hand, that is something that is needed. That is something that I'm not gonna tell you to throw out and that I don't throw out within myself. But it comes to a point where you are this chronic controller, micromanager, to the point where it's affecting your day-to-day -day life. It's actually affecting the way that you show up in your friendships, family, relationships, etc. And I started to realize, and I've been deconstructing this perfectionist mindset over the, f the past few years, really, I've been realizing how much it's actually affected my whole entire life and the way that I live, or I should say the way that I'm not living. I'm getting a lot better at not being like this and I'm gonna give you some tips on how you can stop, but I would be somebody who would pre-plan outfits for things that literally would not be happening for months and months to come. I would be somebody who would bring the eyelash glue in my bag just in case my eyelash decided to like come off a little bit. I am still somebody who makes appointments way ahead of time just in case that appointment for some reason they call and they say they have to cancel at last minute and then whatever I needed to do, I'll still have enough time to get a new appointment before I actually need my hair done for a certain thing like vacation. I used to be somebody who would write down a manifestation list of how I wanted my life to look, but, but to a T, like who exactly I would be dating and what every type of feature that they would have and what they would be interested in and where they would be living and where I would be living and how my life looked. I used to be somebody who would plan out my days to the hour, honestly, to the minute. Now, a lot of these things are amazing things and a lot of them I still do, but I came to a point where being so controlling and being a perfectionist and trying to make these things work out always in my favor ended up creating a lot of barriers for me to actually go live my life because I would have so many things that I would have to make sure that were in place before I decided to go and hang out with friends or decide to go on a mini vacation or decide to do anything in my life that it almost became too much of an issue and I wouldn't do anything. Like I almost became way too high maintenance to even go for like a getaway weekend or go stay over at my friends or Throughout the week, if my friend was nearby and she wanted to come over and say hi to me, I would automatically go to how that was going to 
um, throw me off of my routine and how I have this strict night routine and I have to be in bed at this time and I have to be reading a book at this time and I have to be eating this meal at this time and that means I can't go off on a whim when my friend is in town and she wants to see me on a Wednesday night. It became that much of an issue where I realized I wasn't living my life. I was dreading when my friends would ask me to hang out. I was dreading when I had something that I wanted to plan in my life come up because I realized how many systems and things that I was going to need to put in place in order for me to actually be able to do this. But this was all me putting this on myself. I even remember when I was starting to talk to guys for the first time, when I was like 17, 18 years old, I would talk actually a little bit earlier than that, but that's when I really started to actually like go and meet guys in real life. I would be this girl who I would, let's say like find a cute guy on social media and we'd be talking and texting, but I always had in my head the idea of like, I would never go and meet up with them. Like I was never gonna go actually meet up with them in real life because I thought that I wasn't pretty enough or my body wasn't where I wanted it to be yet. So in my head, I was like, it's an automatic no, but you could see how that actually affects the way that you show up in life when you're telling yourself you're not ready yet. You have to be perfect or a no, not yet, not yet, not yet. But then you're not able to go out in life and connect with people and learn new things and get better at accepting yourself when it comes to being around men or doing something for the first time. There's also times where I would procrastinate on a thing that I knew that I needed to do because I was telling myself that it was I have to be perfect and in this right energy state and this I have to have everything in my life all perfect in order for me to sit down and work on this project that when my life was inevitably chaotic and when things weren't perfectly set in place, I would procrastinate on doing that thing and that thing now became so big to the point where I would dread doing that thing. And this thing, like working on a project that I actually really wanted to do, became so much bigger than it needed to be. All because I was putting these boundaries and these borders and this expectation that I needed to have things a certain way before I actually did them. And the worst part of it all, is that when life inevitably happened and chaos occurred in my life and something, I forgot the eyelash glue at home or the appointment canceled and I didn't have enough time to reschedule, it would throw me off so much because my nervous system, my mental state wasn't capable of handling a little bit of chaos, a little bit of being thrown off, a little bit of a cancellation or realizing that, you know what, for the rest of the night, my eyelash is like kind of off or I'm gonna have to take both of them off and I'm gonna have to go through my night and look like this. I was training my nervous system to not be resilient. I was training my nervous system and myself to, to keep small, to be small. And that is literally no way to live. See. The problem with this T response is that it no longer is keeping us safe the way that we believe. At least the way that the part of us subconsciously that is still stuck in childhood believes. See, when we have any type of T response, any type of self-sabotaging behavior, any behavior that we kind of now we're realizing like, okay, maybe that's not actually helpful and I don't wanna be so controlling and I don't wanna be this perfectionist. There's still a part of us that is convinced that doing these behaviors is keeping us safe. And if we want to finally go and live our life, finally not care what we look like when we go on the first date and honestly, he can accept me as I am or just see me as I go or whatever that freaking <laughs> quote is. In order for us to be in that energy, we have to have that part of us that wants to control to understand that it no longer needs to control anymore. Now there's a reason why we pick up certain behaviors, these T responses, usually and always from our past, our childhood. And it's always good to kind of see how you've grown up or the people that were around you that created this need for control, this need to constantly be in fight or flight, because that's really what it is. When you are being a perfectionist, when you want borders and boundaries and boxes around your life. It is a nervous system response. You are hyper focused at making sure that everything is not a threat to you because you have been, you've lived before in so many threats that actually might have been real, 
But maybe when you're living now, these threats are no longer real. Going out and realizing that your eyelash is coming off a little bit and you don't have your glue to fix it, and the fact that you might have to now go out all night, maybe not looking picture perfect the way you wanted to because you don't have your eyelashes on anymore, that's not actually a threat. But you, your nervous system and your inner child, it's trained to believe that this small thing is a threat. And what's important for you to do now as an adult is to train yourself and realize that all of these things don't need to be a threat anymore. You are safe. And when it comes to trying to drop this perfectionist mindset, the first step is making your part, your protector part aware that it no longer needs to be in this perfectionist controlling coping mechanism anymore. And I think the best way for you to be able to really do that is first to become aware that this is not helpful and you've kind of seen a few examples in this video and I'm sure you've, you might be aware of it, but really bringing the unconscious conscious and being aware of, you know what? Look at how many times that I've said no to my friends. Look at how many times that I didn't go on that first date because I told myself that I wasn't ready. Look at how many times that I'm saying no to life in general because I'm telling myself and I'm putting all of these huge expectations and this all of this nonsense really on myself and so I don't go live my life. That's gonna be the first step. And I always like to mention doing parts work. It's basically like doing inner child work, talking to the part of you that for some reason still believes that being a perfectionist is helpful in your life. I have a playlist on my TikTok with examples of doing parts work if you are somebody who is new to this. And also getting the book No Bad Parts by Richard Schwartz is a very good book to get if you really wanna understand how to do parts work. But honestly, the first step is that self-awareness is realizing this is no longer serving me anymore. I am no longer living my life anymore. The second step is to decide to be okay with not being great at everything. And furthermore, deciding to still do things anyways. Whether that's you going on a first date, picking up a camera and starting your first YouTube video, deciding to go on a vacation when not all of the details are finalized yet. You don't always have to be 100% in order to do these things. And what I like to tell myself too when I realize that I'm getting in my own way again is to remind myself that even if I was perfect, if I had the eyelash glue, if I had the amazing body that I say that I need to have before going on dates and having the best time of my life and my hair is perfect and everything is perfect, even if I had all of those things, it's not guaranteed that something might not occur that might throw you off kilter a little bit. And with knowing that, what is the point of trying to micromanage everything in your life then? What is the point? And another thing I like to tell myself is, the only way you're actually going to get good at these things, the only way that you're gonna start building more confidence and having like the best time of your life on first dates or feeling like you're so pretty when you're going out despite having half your eyelash off, is that in order for you to get good at these things, you actually have to try and do them. You literally the way that you learn in life, the way that you ride a bike, the way that you learn how to sing a song for the first time is you practice, you do the thing, you mess up and you do it again and again until you actually become great. It's like we're expecting to be great without actually even taking any action. It's like you expect to be this huge influencer on social media when you haven't even picked up a camera and recorded yourself filming. How I got big on TikTok or YouTube, Instagram, everything wasn't my first video being absolutely perfect and it going viral. It wasn't. I knew when I picked up that camera that in a month, I'm gonna have even better content. The third step with just trying to live your life more and not being such a perfectionist is to sit with yourself when you start to realize you're having these thoughts come in. Let's say your friends have asked you to go out to dinner on a Wednesday night and you are somebody who has a certain routine and maybe you're on a strict eating plan. You have all of these things going on in your life. Start to become aware of the thoughts that that part of you, the protector part of you, is trying to tell you about doing this thing. You might have thoughts like, no, 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 I can't do that, oh my gosh, no, because then if I go and have dinner, then I'm gonna be thrown off and all of my 
all of my work with eating healthy and going to the gym, everything is going to be wiped away. And if I go for dinner, then I'm not gonna be home till really, really late and I'm not gonna be able to do it and I'm not gonna be able to wake up in the morning and do X, Y, Z and I can't do it. And ask yourself when you're having these thoughts like, am I making this way bigger than it is? Because the truth is, just because it's a Wednesday night and yes, you are on, let's say an eating plan or you know you have a certain bedtime routine, who is to say that you couldn't go to dinner and have a very healthy, beautiful meal and connect with your friends and actually use your words and have boundaries and say, you know what guys, I have to leave by nine o'clock so that I can get home and get in bed by 10 o'clock. There's ways in which that you can work around the things that you have set in your life and your goals. Because like I said, having goals and discipline and, and being a perfectionist, it's not all bad, but Sometimes we make things so much bigger than it is and it's important to watch yourself when you start to create so much chaos over nothing. And the truth is, going to see your friend on a Wednesday night might be so much more healing than you sitting at home, eating your perfectly curated, healthy ass meal. When you stop caring so much about outcomes and having so many expectations on things and preparing and preventing and just micromanaging, you start to live your life. And I've heard this before and I didn't really take this advice of how I don't have to plan out absolutely everything and how you could still love, live life and still enjoy it. I didn't really, I didn't wanna hear that until I started actually slowly not caring so much about having every single thing in place and I realized that Every time I took the focus off of controlling outcomes and planning and bringing things and making sure everything was aligned, it allowed me to bring my energy into the present moment. And when you're in the present moment, you're living life. And when you're living life, you're connecting with people and you're out of your head and you're not looking at everything as a threat. And when you're in that environment, in that state of being, so many things open up connections open up. You're, you're available to have connections with other people and having connections with people in your life is so important for you to actually expand and grow in your life, for you to have new ideas on how to do certain things, a new recipe to make for next week, a new video idea to record for next week. You might meet somebody who you have been longing to meet and you've only been going on dating apps trying to find that person and you actually find that person in real life because you're living in the present moment. When you are not living in the present moment, but you, your body physically is there, but you're in your mind, that's not living life. And even coming back from my vacation that I had, there was a lot of chaos and I embraced it for the first time ever. And I realized in that moment that I wanna have a nervous system and a being that can handle when life throws you a curveball, when things happen and it's not planned. Because what happened on that trip when things happened and it wasn't planned and I actually surrendered and I let myself just live and not try and micromanage considering I couldn't do much anyways, I had the best time. And I had the best time because I was just letting myself live in the moment. And when you do that, again, you, you find yourself doing things you would never do, conversations you would never have, dancing when you never really would because you'd be so stressed about the fact that this whole day is not going the way that you planned. I don't wanna be that person anymore. I don't want to stress out about things not working out in life. And I've learned over the years as I matured to stop complaining about how things aren't going my way in life. Sometimes things just don't go your way in your life, but it's the way that you perceive these things. It's the meaning that you put on these things. And I believe you can always take so much control over your life in a way that is healthy. You can take control over your life by saying, I'm gonna decide to release all range and have a good ass time, even though this is not going how I planned it to. That is still something where you can still incorporate the masculine energy, you can still incorporate the part of you that's trying to protect you in a way that's still healthy and allows you to live your life. So this spring and summer, and yes, I'm talking about spring and summer 
even though it's January, because I am seriously so over winter, even though we're embracing it, don't worry, it's not that big of a deal in my head. I'm talking to myself here, but I'm gonna be moving in April and I wanna do so many new things when I move to the city. I wanna create more friendships in real life. I wanna do more content. I wanna do so many things. I wanna to go to concerts. I wanna to go to festivals. I wanna do things that usually I would put so much stress and anxiety on that I either wouldn't do it or I would do it, but every time that I did that thing, I still wasn't really living in the moment. I no longer want to have that life and I definitely don't want to have that life this summer. I want to go out and do things even if my body doesn't look the best or I don't have the perfect outfit or my hair is looking a little bit weird or my skin's not the best. I don't want to care about being perfect anymore. And if you are the same way that I want to know in the comments what you're going to be working on throughout the winter into the summer and what you're maybe looking forward to from a place of just embracing life and not being a perfectionist. And also let me know what areas of your life have been affected by you being this micromanager and this perfectionist. And if you are somebody who is judgmental, you criticize yourself a lot, you are very, again, it's, it's this byproduct of being a perfectionist and having to have everything a certain way and honestly a T response, that this trickles down to how you treat yourself internally. The things that you tell yourself about yourself. And if you struggle with that, I want you to go watch the video that is on the screen right now. It's all about how to stop judging and criticizing yourself so much. Those are things that have really helped me heal the relationship that I have towards myself to allow me to go live life and not be perfect with everything. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please like this video if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe because I know some of you guys are not subscribed yet. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.